Nigeria's government over the latter's decision to reverse the benchmark values policy by as much as 50%. Now, does the decision spell doom for increased cost of goods or have the importers and traders been gaming the system for the longest while, where they've been the sole beneficiaries? And why couldn't government ensure that the benchmark values that would ensure cheaper goods on the market were exactly that, cheaper? but later felt that consumers were not directly benefiting, hence a need to reverse the policy. And will this reversal really impact local production and for those particular items that are being targeted? We'll talk about that. But before we begin our conversation in studio, last week, uh, the importers and exporters were very unhappy. They'd been, they claimed they'd been locked out of the system at the ports, and this they felt was unfair because they had submitted all their details before the year ended. And so if the policy uh, to reverse the benchmark values was to be implemented, it should be implemented in the new year for those who'd be submitting their new uh, requests. Let's hear them. Offshore entry with our electronic uh, platform. HM is a new assessment. And our duty is 32 the entry on the electronic platform shows there is a new assessment of 32,358 ICOM systems indicating have paid the 32,358 so they have started charging us. entry our system new. And as at now, make us a duty aba 32,358. Which is which? Me buy me could be a say. I have one entry to do, but the secretary said the system is not working. Entries now imports for Bimudi can send me last week. I must say, young chain and I'm on Baba Customs, the end of the whole day, and to be a human, and to cry, and yet you might. We were told to wait the whole day, so we couldn't do our entries yesterday. I import um, used clothing. Right, and um, initially I pay um, 31000 thereabouts for duty. Um, that was when the benchmark value was being applied to. But now, um, I think Friday or a week ago, we were, we were told um, the benchmark value has taken effect. It was, it was an impromptu thing to we the importers, and now we are paying... Uh, when my agents contacted me, he said, uh, "Now the duty is um, forty-one thousand thereabouts, or forty-five that, from thirty-one, 31, yeah, to like forty-one, forty-two thousand thereabouts, which is outrageous." So those were some uh, importers and exporters. They're quite unhappy about the situation at the port. Well, it was uh, a while before we got some response, and, and that was also in relation to the benchmark values implementation. Let's hear Deputy Minister of Trade, Honorable Autry Berfi. Good that they are in business, and so nobody can fault them as far as they, are, they, they think they are importers and uh, exporters. They, are, they think that they are, they are also in business, and, uh, and therefore they have the right also to make uh, certain comments and and even agitate, but as to whether uh, the agitation, I mean, will also carry so much weight and as far as this arrangement is concerned, because we believe that you know every government would like to gov would like to to protect people who are taking risk in in, in their country, to be able to uh, promote businesses, start businesses from the scratch, be able to you know the government, this government has a policy. A flag, one of their flagship policies is the 1D1F, and we are focusing on industrialization, trying to industrialize the country, and therefore uh, we will do what we call import substitution by producing most of the things we that we import now, producing it in the country, and so we want to encourage as many people as possible who want to venture in, in the industries to set up businesses, and government definitely will want to want to protect their interests and that is how come it will be very difficult for government even if we want to set government want to set with the uh, with the with the, the importers and exporters as to whether government will go back 
to, to what they expect the government to do, it's done that thing altogether. And uh, thanks very much for staying with us. Now, let's uh, introduce our guests in studio. To my immediate left is Dr. Joseph Obing, president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, popularly known as GUTA. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, next to him is Alfred Thompson, who is a former deputy MD for NIB, and he's representing the government. Um, good morning, Mr. Thompson. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Mr. Akpelo, who is the Greater Accra AGI chairman joining us. He's also the CEO of Suku Technologies and he's an entrepreneur as well. We'll have later on on the phone the Honorable Ricketts Hagan who is a former Deputy Minister and um, MP for Cape Coast South. So thank you gentlemen <coughs> for joining me. So I'll start with you Mr. Bing. So I know that there was a major meeting uh, just what on, on Thursday uh, the stakeholders present Guta the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, Association of Customs House Agents, Importers and Exporters Association, Food and Beverages Association, Automobile Dealers Association, Ghana Brokers Association of Ghana, and the Ghana Pharmaceutical and Wholesalers Association, in addition, of course, to <coughs> government. What is the next step in, I mean, after that meeting? Because we know the benchmark policy was to be implemented as of last week, but it looks like now we are not sure if it's actually been implemented. Thank you very much. And um, I'm sorry for my voice, because I'm being troubled. <laughs> it's been a busy week <laughs> for busy you. Week so. for me, yes, so. of course, but we understand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have gone to see um, the Minister of Finance and to remind him the fact that we have unfinished business. When AGI had gone to the economic management team to lobby and peddle some untruth to convince them, we were called <laughs> upon to come there. And so, uh, fortunately, I was called upon and I went there and then I also gave our perspective of the whole thing. And then they saw reason to what I was saying because I was able to expose most of the things that they were trying to use to convince government. So they said that Guta also have a point. And so, um, much as um, the AGI also have some point, but we cannot um, decide on this now unless we have thorough stakeholder engagement. That was what was promised us. And then, um, if you recall at the, um, uh, uh, the economic dialogue, uh, presidential dialogue at Kempinski, this same um, a question came, and Honorable Safumafu also said the same thing, that the old issue is very dicey, and that the fact that some industries are not doing well, or that does not mean um, the good people of Ghana should be set out. So we have to put this in the proper context by, by organizing a proper uh, um, stakeholder engagement. So I understand that this policy is not to be implemented till the 17th. Is that the case? Um, uh, after our meeting uh, with the ministry, this is what has happened. But let me give you background. If I do not give you background, we'll get the whole thing very wrong. The benchmark um, policy came not out of emptiness. It came because there was a, pr a problem, very serious problem. So we put it at the table. We have um, um, gone through um, the um, um, uh, uh, national... Um, the state, uh, Council of State, mm. and then they led us to the discussion with government. And then we put the figures on the table and say, is this what you people have to contend with? Duties are, uh, rates are very high, uh, that make it virtually very, uh, difficult for us to trade. And everybody was complaining at that time. Cumulatively, we were made to pay duty of about 55% of our invoice value, meaning that um, if you, that's when you pay 20% duty. Cumulatively 55 means that when you bring an invoice value of $100,000, you have to go and find $55,000 to pay your duties at that and other levies, which is among the highest in the whole of the world. Now, if you pay 35% to, you are made to um, uh, 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 find 65%. Uh, where 65% will translate 
in the case of 100,000 um, of your invoice value to about 65,000. So they all appreciated that, no, um, it is too much. So there was a problem that brought this thing. So we reminded the minister that because of this problem that um, and the benchmark was introduced. The government, initially we wanted the rates to come down, but the government said they cannot work on the rates because of the common external tariff, and that they will discount the invoice values for us. And that's what has come to be known as the um, <coughs> benchmark um, reduction value. And this thing has been with us, and it has happened tremendously. Well, it's been with us since 2019. To, since, since 2019, um, the, the good people, the prices of goods and services have been contained, regardless of the fact that the same rates have been going up, other um, um, charge, fees and charges at the port keep going up and all that. Um, during COVID time, the um, uh, world commodity prices have gone up, some, in some cases about 200%, and um, free charges have sought, gone up. Um, 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 from between $3,000 to $15,000. And all this, because of the benchmark, we were able to contain um, um, uh, the prices and able to serve the good people of Ghana. Government have been getting its revenue targets. Government have been getting uh, uh, and exceeding its revenue target even the year of the COVID, 2020, when the COVID outbreak uh, came. They exceeded their target. Now, they are even on course of um, achieving their target. So it's not something that I've come to worry anybody. AGI um, wake up and then say that the benchmark value have made goods, imported goods, so cheap in the market. And they are, it has made their prices so high. And so because of that reason, they cannot turn up a production and sell which was not true. Prices, of, uh, the, uh, it has been able to contain prices and all that, but their inability to produce um, at a, a competitive price is because of factors militating against the industry. The env uh, enabling environment is not there. For them, cost of borrowing is um, over 22%, where their competitors in Morocco, Egypt, are sourcing their um, credit for 1%, 2% and even the highest 3% in other countries. Um, uh, electricity bills are very high. Uh, water bills very high. Um, they don't have um, a modern technology um, um, of production. They have to get the resources to get those things. And so we said that these, these are the areas that industries can thrive. But the, the benchmark value have no bearing whatsoever with uh, their frustration. And so we, uh, uh, we reminded government, because what AGI also have told government, we reminded the finance minister that much as they say that this thing should be removed um, from the trading sector, they are also saying that it should be maintained for them because they said that it's a good policy for them. You know, the reason why they are saying that because there's a thin line between the so-called manufacturing here and then importation because they import over 90 percent of their manufacturing input the input of manufacturing so there's a thin line so they want the advantages of the benchmark value and yet they want it to be removed we said all things to um, the finance minister to remind him that um, the whole um, argument is being one-sided and that's we are calling on government, the promised um, state of stakeholder engagement uh, to come so that we dissect the issues. And so that we uh, come to some agreement. Exactly. Okay. So that we all have um, some agreement today. So we owe everything together. Okay. I like the way you put the argument because I think the fundamental issue you seem to raise for me is that everybody needs a buffer. Yes, the traders need a buffer. The local producers and manufacturers also need a buffer. But um, let me bring in uh, Mr. Akpelu because um, it may seem unfair to suggest that this is all AGI is doing. It makes it look as if maybe government has not looked at the issues and you are blaming AGI. So let me bring in Mr. Akpelu. So Mr. Akpelu, I think 
there, there is a criticism here that, and I'd like you to address that quickly. Does AGI have a personal or an organizational interest in having these benchmark values removed, yet there's a view that you don't want it for another organization or another group. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning to your viewers and listeners. And also, Happy New Year. Yes, sir. And uh, I want to say to my good friend, uh, Joseph, to calm down. He's, this morning, the tempo is really very high. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so thank you for the question. So essentially, uh, around 2019, uh, when the announcement was made, I recall it was actually around the Physician and Surgeon College. We were there, uh, President, Vice President Baumia made the announcement. There at the venue, we granted interview to the media and we were sharply against the, the policy. The truth is that AGI has always been extremely consistent with our advocacy on, on this matter. What we are saying is, if you give incentives for importers, it makes local production unattractive because you would have, you know, importers having more money in their pocket and our industrialists, which is already, you know, a very difficult terrain. Uh, uh, there's a lot of challenges we are facing, as you mentioned, and so to continue to burden, you know, the, the producer was making it very difficult for people to stay in business. It got to a stage where it, it, it became more lucrative to import than to produce. And as, you know, rational business people, a lot of people were going to be turning into uh, importation halves. The truth is, every country that developed, <coughs> developed at the back of industrialization you need to always incentivize your local production sector in order for them to produce. What we are saying this policy has done is, the policy has successfully been able to empower the whole importation co community as against production. And the truth is, for some time now, due to the, the industrialization program of successive governments, Ghana, we, we've been picking up and given that the Continental Free Trade Agreement is here, which essentially encourages local production, because to benefit from this whole agreement, you need to produce locally, certified, you know, goods of origin and things like that. And then you can export. But if the people who are to produce and export, are these people, the same people not having interest any longer to produce, how are we going to take advantage of the Continental Free Trade Agreement? So our call is very simple, that government should revert the policy. And we've been on that call to now. So we, we've not seen something new happening. We just realized that government reverted back the policy that we complained about. Mm. Now, some of the things that are being um, targeted by this policy, for instance, cartons, boxes of paper, you know, cables, um, vehicles, for instance, uh, other things such as maybe um, food, spaghetti, and, and stuff like that, carbonated and soft drinks, you know, uh, flexible packaging materials, pharmaceuticals, machinery equipment, you know, spare parts. I mean, let's be honest, some of these things, even if the benchmark values are taken off, we don't produce them here. For instance, the bagging of the cement, do we, do we actually have bag and prepare the paper here? It seems we import that. The vehicles that people are using to run their business or agricultural machinery, we import them. So I'm just wondering what is the wider benefit to okay. local manufacturers? Because maybe some of these inputs, you are also importing yourselves. Great. So I'll, let me clarify the AGI's call. AGI is not saying that take off the policy entirely. We're saying that we have capacity to produce in some products. And this is the list of products. And we have demonstrated that indeed we, we have the capacity. Don't you see Ghanaian produce medicines here? If you go to the pharmacy, don't you have options of medicines produced in Ghana? 
take cables. We produce cables. <laughs> Vegetable cooking oils. Walmart Africa, one of our companies, produce, one company, produce more than what Ghana needs. In fact, they have to export the, the SS. So we have the capacity. You and I know. So we are not saying that they should take off the policy entirely. We are just saying those products that we've got capacity to produce, let's protect those products. And those that we don't have capacity, they can <coughs> continue to enjoy the policy. And our cost has been very clear. So it's really selective. In the development process, you have to be very deliberate and selective. Do you know that Nigeria banned importation of rice entirely? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the Nigerian you know, industrial community have the capacity to produce rice. What it means is that the Nigerian government made a policy decision to force local consumption of production, uh, you know, consumption of rice. So it has orchestrated a massive, you know, you know, growth of local rice production in, in Nigeria, where some of their people even come to Ghana to buy our paddy rice to go and process. So I'm saying that these policies are designed to create certain effect, which essentially is to promote local production. And if we are really serious about the whole industrialization agenda, then we have to take some of this very seriously. But shouldn't the target be the, the factors of production? The, we should rather tell government to reduce the cost of power to you, reduce the cost of credit to you, reduce, um, you know, all the red tape that, you know, local manufacturers and producers have to go to, give you the same incentives they give foreign uh, manufacturers. I'm sure on a scale of one to five, if you were to get all those five kinds of incentives, it may even be cheaper or you may actually even get more than just the benchmark value. Maybe those are the things you should be forcing out of the government, not necessarily this one policy. So oh, everything you've said, you are correct. We have been on a journey of asking government to make the business environment more friendlier and more productive. What this call is meant for is that the introduction of that policy is giving further you know, burden. It's taking us back. Because take it. This is simple. You uh, can, are, can you give me which industries, for instance, were significantly, at, like if you have members who decided to import, I mean, which, which sectors were particularly badly affected by the benchmark policy? Because it's been a bit difficult getting specific data and information in relation to it. Great. So take like catalysts like cables, okay? Several for that, we've got about 23 sectors, and these sectors have subsectors. So almost every aspect of the industrial component is affected. And, and this is how you have to contextualize it. You, you are now, as a result of the policy, the importer is making money, real money, as a result of the policy. So what we're saying is that then it is then become <coughs> attractive to import. Do, do you get the, the gist of the policy? And if you don't take time, you, you are going to convert industrialists into importers. Because already, as you mentioned, the terrain is hard. It's not as simple. There are several you know, factors that are affecting us already. So why are you going to do that to continue to incentivize importers and you have to separate importers from distributors because the importer is that business guy who have the money who brings the goods and make the cut so if the margins are that good everybody will go into importation but do you develop a country with, with, with that kind of attitude all right so let let me hear from um, mr thompson so mr thompson what is government's rationale for removing the benchmark policy is it as the ndc said at its press conference on Thursday that it is just a way for government to get money from everyone because really debt sustainability is tough, the environment is hard, and the government needs money in order to do you know, various things. And this is one way to get money out of citizens, out of you know, business people. Thank you, Jifa, and good morning. Happy New Year since I haven't seen you from the beginning of the year. 
and to Joseph and Sona, um, Happy New Year. I know it's a difficult time for both of them since uh, they are all fighting for their bit of the cake, but it tells you that it gives government more difficulty in making sure that everybody is satisfied. A special greeting to my people from the central region, and they know the love I have for them is deep. If I, you see how we are suffering. Who? Government? Yes. When you want to satisfy everybody, it's a problem. When people sit back, and especially when our opponents sit back and they want to make political capital out of all this, I ask myself, are we serious as a nation? Because what is this going to do for us? We empathize with uh, Guta because definitely they are making, their, their income would definitely drop. But forgetting that whilst their income is drop, um, increasing, it's helping another country to grow. What are we doing for ourselves as a nation? Are we also growing our country or are we just doing things that would help uh, us make money and develop another country better and faster than we want to develop ourselves? We've been shouting out, we've been crying. Local industrialization, let's grow our country, let's fix our country. How do you fix it? When every money you make, you export. Balance of payments when we took over was in the deficit. When we, um, the total importation is against the total exportation, we are always looking for extra money to go and pay for um, our, destiny, our export, uh, imports. And it was affecting us. So we looked at all these. When Guta came, we looked at it, we, we sat on the table, we addressed their concerns. But at the end of the day, we asked ourselves as a government, that listen, how about growing our local industry as well? So what do we have to do? Now, let's move this um, benchmark back to its place. Because when we came, we reduced it by 50% in on some products, 30% on vehicles and other. Uh, no, vehicles was about 50% and 30% on other products and things. So we looked at this whole thing and said, that, listen, yes, government can make cheap money. Because if you want easy money, you can say, listen, Guta, we are going to even reduce it further for you to do more importation. And then we make money. But we are killing our local industry. We want people to get employment. Don't forget that anybody exporting goods from his country to another country are excess goods. They, they are excess goods that they don't need. So they just come and dump it on you, and they can reduce their prices as low as possible to make sure that you off-take it. But we are looking at a situation where we would also grow our industry and also export as excess goods for us to make income and bring it to develop this country. Look at our importation and exportation. From 2015, our total export was about 13 million or billion. Uh, this thing. Import was 14. So we had a deficit of about 931. When you look at 2016, we started and we, we reduced it a bit. It went to 705 because it was 10 as against 11 of imports. Come to 2017, you look at our export, it was about 14. Import was 12. So now we are going into a positive. It tells you that the government's agenda of um, industrialization, of helping the local, um, that's the 1D, 1F, has started to thrive. And it's showing positively. Go to 2018, 17 million, as against 11, giving a positive figure of 5 million. 2019, 60 million, as against 10 million, giving a positive figure of about 6 million plus. So gradually, we are moving into a positive nature. So it also does not affect your, um, that is why you realize that um, previously, as against now, our uh, um, exchange rate, that is the dollar, the devaluation of our city, is gradually coming down. It, it, it gives us the edge to make more and grow Ghana more. And that is why we, we're working with both parties to make sure that locally, Locally, our things are, are perfect. It also creates employment. We've been crying, unemployment, unemployment. Once you are empowering your local industries to grow, you are creating employment in your country. Because once we import more from outside, we are creating employment for someone over there. And that is why you realize that it got to a stage in this country where almost every youth wanted to travel out of this country to go for greener pastures. You saw someone with even a master's degree going to factory centers, working outside, whilst they will not do that here. So when things are better here, they would love to stay. And also, people will start importing people to come and come and work here. And it creates that competitive edge. 
you're helping the local industry, you are giving a positive balance of 43 different items. It tells you that 43 different industries are going to be empowered. He talked about, uh, what do you, you call you, it? You said 43 different industries are going to be empowered. Yes. But the truth, <laughs> like I mentioned there earlier, are 43 is different that products. A lot, of, so these, different, a lot mm -hmm. of these products mm -hmm. are still imported from abroad. So we are not saying that the fact that we have local industries doesn't mean we don't import. We import. Yes, so we what are, I'm are, trying to we say We are growing rice here, but we are still importing rice. Yes, so what I'm trying to say we is are, uh, we are, even we are the rice... Even uh, um, assembling um, cars here, Good. but so still I'm glad, cars I'm glad you use that as an and example. And that is why I said that The rice example gradual... is not very good mm -hmm. because the rice example, there is local rice. Mm -hmm. It is individual choices that mm -hmm. make many of it us is not. go and... It is not. It, it is, is not. Is. No, you see, you are looking at it differently. It is. But look at it on a, on a, on a playing field. Now listen, if you are growing local rice and you are doing it so well and the prices have reduced by government intervention and everything, you think people will not buy local rice against foreign it's rice? It's not just about the reduction in uh, the price. No, people are it's, looking it's reduction at, in the price, the no, quality and everything. Yes, but when I, a lot of people are looking for perfume rice. So local rice is there. It doesn't give that scent. They are looking to make it. They'll say, oh, it's better for Omutu. It's better for this. It's better those, for that. Those who are doing the perfume right? But all I'm they just, start in one day? Okay, but all I'm saying is that's not a very good excuse. I think that's about individual taste. Let's take the cars and the agricultural um, um, plants, for instance. Assembling plants here. We still... We, we when still, you're assembling plants here, aren't you creating business? Aren't you creating employment? Locally, people are getting businesses to do. Locally, your people are getting a, a job to do. And it helps them. You are growing your country because gradually it will go from assembling of um, plants and equipment into manufacturing of plants and equipment. Right now, as we are speaking, we have a, what do you call it? A, this a Katanka car that is being manufactured locally. True or false? True. And government has no, made it a policy. I think, I think it's been assembled. A lot of it is being done in China. But. First, it didn't used to be that. It didn't used to happen. So I get it. So, so I, think getting that, there. I think. And let me tell you something. See some of their parts. When you go to Katanka, they'll tell you that some of their parts they produce locally. Mm -hmm. So what I think what people the want to see is that whatever product it is that you are that will not benefit from the policy, people want to see that locally the production can actually meet the demand. So, for instance, sugar. If I, you don't start something and immediately meet demand locally. You can't. It's a process. It's a growth process. And that is why it will take time. But you have to start somewhere. Okay, so if that's, you don't start that's somewhere, where government is you will starting not from. get anywhere. Okay. And government is key on making sure that we grow this country. Locally, people should be empowered to, be, to stand on their feet and say that, listen, I have been able to start this factory. People import rice, sugar, oil, margarine, so many things every day. But how many of them have sat down for years? They are importing and making money. Yes, we are paying um, the this ten dollar out there and everything. But how many of them have sat down to say that? Listen, let me also start manufacturing locally, or let me bring it and even bag it here. Let's start by bagging. Then after bagging, we now look at how we can produce gradually and get into that stage where we will employ over two thousand people in the factory or three thousand plus. This is the the way to start, and that is why government is key on making sure, and that is why our um, opponents are very key on making sure that they destroy anything that government is doing to help the locals, okay, to help them. people get jobs, okay. to help people. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about this, uh, what do you call it? The, he talked on the, uh, what do you call it, lending rates. Yes. Listen, no, when, I, we took, yes. when we took over power, when you go to a bank to borrow to even start a business, you are paying 40% plus. Now it's dropped to 20% less. 20% and less. There are even certain industries where government even has to benchmark and tell the banks that, listen, some of these industries we are going to support. So we will pay this difference on the interest rates just to grow the local industry. I don't think government is doing wrong here. Okay, I, so let me, let me bring so in Mr. Obin. To make sure me, that we grow locally let me and bring get him, to the point. Okay, let me bring in Mr. Obin. Go ahead, sir. I, I have... A, a, a lot to say. Yes, you have a lot to say. But first, uh, but, but first, but let me just... I should have more because oh, you are the government time. in this So thing, what so I just want worry. you to start I off rather. with is <laughs> the issue he raised about growing another person's economy. Because it's true. If you go to a shop to buy toothpaste, there's Colgate, there's this, there's this, there's, there's Pepsodent, there's mm -hmm. that. I tend to choose to buy the local one. 
But the point is, we need to give the local industries also a push. So there's also a view that the traders, by importing, you are benefiting another country and not our own. How about that? Yeah, it is not true. Mm. You see that, let me tell you, um, we have companies here that are producing extremely well. They are not telling that story. Those companies are so good that it does, it, it, um, it's not attractive for us to travel and bring these goods. And we are buying locally those, those goods. And there are so many of them. The areas of plastics, areas of uh, pharmaceutical, um, the towels, the four towels, just two companies that are producing here. Everybody is not even bringing the towels because the quality is good and the price is good. So it doesn't make sense for you to go. This is what we call in, uh, positive industrialization. Industrialization does not mean that you have to turn up production at a higher cost, extortive uh, uh, prices. We will not buy whether it's made in Ghana or not. That's not what industrialization means. We look at the areas that we have comparative advantage and put all our resources there. Now we are in a global world where countries depend on the strength of other countries. So importation will be there. Those of you who have traveled to America, Europe, and all that go to their um, supermarkets and you see a lot of Chinese products, and yet they were the leading industrialists. Why? Was it that China have come and overtaken America and Europe? But you know For, that. But you know they are also complain about China no, no, yeah, about they're, they're reducing their, their, their currency rate, so it makes their exports exports much cheaper. Well, so it's a strategy of Chinese government. So if you have a strategy to boost yours, that's what you have to also do. Of course, they've done that, and China is still leading the way. So. Um, now, how, how, why is China leading? China is leading because their uh, productivity is um, um, not costly. They produce at a, and sell at an affordable price. So it does not mean that you have to produce and sell at a assertive price. You draw on where you have your comparative advantage and then make sure that those goods that you are able to produce will make Ghana a hub of it. So that other countries can depend on us. It doesn't mean that we have to produce everything. It is wrong. We will fail in our industrialization drive. Because even by... I, the is that what you think we are trying to do? Oh, yes. That's what we are trying to do. That we, we have to produce everything. There are some things that even by geographical position... Things like what? It, they say there are so many things that by geographical position you will not be competitive. If you don't know, then you don't know what you are doing. You have something that we call localization of industry. So localization of industry um, uh, give advantage to a certain vicinity. The product that they do make it relatively cheaper. So if you do not do your due diligence to know where you have your competitive advantage, then you cannot tell government that come and untrace somebody so that you have your way. In any case, you know the incentives that government are, are giving to industries. And let's ask ourselves, why are they not turning this incentive to positivity? Um, once we pay duty, they do not pay duty. Oh, local in, local yes, people pay yes, duty. Yes, I'm, I'm telling you. Because they because, also complain because about... Because duty mm -hmm. is uh, barely 5%, and the 5% is also um, taking advantage of the benchmark value. So their duty is virtually nil. That's what I'm telling you. I don't and think that's actually yeah, that is That is the truth. Ask him. He will, and he most will of their products are even zero rated. Because there are a lot of the foreign entities get tax holidays. Local industries, a lot of them don't. A lot of them don't. Please, 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 yes. please let, me, let me finish. And then when we pay VAT to the government, government take it home. <laughs> it, it is never returned to us. VS is returned to them. So they have a leverage of over 40%. That government is given to incentivize them so that they can... How, how is this thing not um, turning to the advantage of the consumer or to the importer so that we do not even travel miles away to go and buy? Um, we, the the import, import that we do, they tax us um, some levy. And this levy is, go, uh, uh, is given to uh, industry, to support industry and then um, export. Hmm? And yes, there's a, 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 a levy that is given to you, if you don't know, then go and find it and source it. 
the, a, a government is having it, and you have been are giving you, all this support. Are you sure they are getting it? Uh, that, that if they are not getting that, it's being sorted from us. Doctor, your voice is back. No. Okay. Uh, so, because, okay. no, uh, <laughs> um, um, yes. Doctor, uh, yes, uh, you have uh, something to address with yes, him. Yes, Dr. Yes. Thompson was doctor. saying that, uh, okay, Mr. Thompson was saying, you look more <laughs> Don't like worry, Mr. Thompson, <laughs> talk about the issues he raised. You are talking about mm -hmm. um, uh, before 2019, it was negative um, balance of trade. And now we are surplus because manufacturing is booming, export is going up, and so we have surplus, and we have been getting this surplus. So what is your problem? So it means that so the benchmark, excuse more. me, excuse me. So it means that the benchmark did not have any effect on these things that you are talking about, and it's true. I don't know where they are coming from. Finish. You, you just said this and it's an indictment. No, finish. I'll explain. It's an indictment. So the benchmark, uh, my dear, do not have any bearing whatsoever. Ask him, ask this gentleman, okay. that, that if the benchmark hmm? policy is reversed, like they are cramping for, is, uh, are their goods going to go down, the price of their goods? Is it going to affect their, uh, the, the price of their goods? Okay, but what, what, about, what about the question or the criticism raised of Guta that you got the benchmark uh, value policy, but prices had not It been is lower. never true. Uh, uh, that is what our detractors are using against us. Things could have been higher. But in any case, ask um, ADI. Mm -hmm. they, they have uh, the, the opportunity, they have their machines located in Ghana. They buy the raw material as source. And the raw material price is the same everywhere in the world. And they have advantage of the benchmark reduction also. Ask them if they were able to reduce their prices as, uh, because of the benchmark. They will tell you because of exchange rates and other factors at the port, we could not uh, reduce. And so those factors are not aligned to trading. This is not fair. You are not being truthful. Is it them or is government? You said? I yes, said, is it AGI or is government? It's, it's AGI. Me, I'm not <laughs> talking uh, uh, to uh, <laughs> but, but, government. I'm talking to AGI okay. because they are, they are doing, but, they are lobbying and all that. But these duties that you are complaining about are set by government. But let me tell you, we, 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 we even um, went to government and told government that, look here, find some resources for us. And that's what we were talking about, the tripod scheme. And we said that uh, most of us import from abroad Normally, not necessarily because even of the pricing, but because we do not even have the resources to and go so into manufacturing to, uh, to buy even the goods. The local, the local manufacturers cannot give us credit because they also are talent, maybe. And most of us can get uh, suppliers' credit abroad. So government fund a deliberate policy that will give us um, some resources that will take this resource and buy these goods. That it, make, it means that, that that's what they have Exim Bank everywhere. Mm -hmm. The Exim Bank in Turkey, the Exim Bank um, in India, all is yet to support the local industries. So that if you buy from the local manufacturer, then you have access to this fund. And we suggested the same. So the factors that will lead people to buy from the local manufacturers are very, and we, we, we've drawn government's attention to it. And they are, they are not able to even tell their own story as to how government can help, help them. And they are just being petty about benchmark, benchmark policy. It's not any incentive, big incentive that government gave to destroy no, industries. No, 30 to 50 percent no, is let me not tell bad. You, let me tell you. It's because, no, situate it at the 55 percent that we are talking that about. You and you know that earlier. it's a, re, a relief that government is giving to us. So if government has reduced the, um, the tax rate, uh, we, we could have solved the problem. They, they say they don't, they can't reduce. Where well, other countries were uh, went um, to ECOWAS and even bargained for this same tax rate? Is it are doing? So all that we are saying is that we have to get some re relief, and the government have given us this relief, and it's not in any contradiction to your productivity. It doesn't have. If if tell me if we take the benchmark, is your product going to be cheaper? Okay. So I think you've asked that question three times. So we can now let Mr. Akpelu uh, come in. So I, I hope you've taken note well, of let the me tell you, Let me give you this before I forget. <laughs> okay. You see, no, they, were, the they, were, they were saying that. <laughs> no, you, you have you know, you know that they were saying that we don't even have paddy rice to put it in a, 
um, machines. The, they have uh, machines. Um, what is a refinery machine? Yeah. Or, uh, uh, the mills. The mills. The mills. The mills. That's what he said. That's what they have been saying. The locals, because we do not buy, the locals cannot even produce. But you see now, he said that Nigeria come and buy the party rice. And they always complain. It's Mr. It's Mr. Thompson who said that. No, they, uh, the AGI, that's their yeah, complaint. The they say because the locals do not even produce uh, to feed the mills and that they are, uh, they are, they are, they are, uh, the mills are dying. And other countries have come from Nigeria to buy the product. You know why? They uh, reduce the price. They cheat the uh, local agrowers with cheap price. And so the Nigerians come and top up. So the, some of these people are cheating under the guise of manufacturing. And it's not even happening the um, uh, supply chain. You know what is happening? If I say that most of them are cheating, some of them come here and then they say that they are manufacturing. And then they bring the finished product and then just, they just put them in a, a rubber. They bag it. They bag it. But and that's then, a start. No, a start. You get all the incentive and they will never start because they, they are still importing like they are telling us it's cheaper there so they will never go anywhere and then they will set up they will they will take advantage of government policy and they will never go anywhere okay, the, one, so of, I, them, one you, of them was sending one of them was sending their goods to nigeria under the utls and then nigeria said this one this product will never allow it they say why because this product is not made in ghana under the rules of origin under the rules of origin the, um, you have to manufacture about sixty percent. So what we are supporting as manufacturers is even not manufacturing at all. Okay. So and you are Mr. Okay, um, Mr. Pelu, go what? ahead. Thank you. you have your chance. Go ahead. Joseph, I really need to. Oh, it's, it's Mr. Pelu, just morning. go ahead. Let's get him some tea. Yeah. <laughs> just go so, ahead. You know, we are all business people. Mm -hmm. uh, aside everything, we're entrepreneurs. Uh, we all want to make money from from our investment. Mm -hmm. The only difference is. Our focus is developing Ghana, and somebody may make a decision to import. The, the reality is this. As a businessman, you are first and foremost very rational in your decision making. So if there's a government policy, that makes importation attractive. As a rational businessman, you're most likely to move to import given that there are major constraints that affect local production. That is the trust of our issue. What but you, say you've made that point, but I think the other point he wants, uh, he made, which I think is interesting is, they also want to buy from local manufacturers. Are you saying you don't have locally manufactured products to buy? And we are buying from them. I told you, I just told you, and gave you examples. That we are, we are buying these tiles from here. Those we are, are buying pharmaceuticals. Already. So, so, so he mentioned tiles, he mentioned pharmaceuticals. With plastic items. I know that, that, and he mentioned plastic. And so we don't even travel and, and buy. And then, of course, we know that we have a strong... That's the way forward. We have a strong cable manufacturing uh, et cetera, sector. Et cetera, et cetera. Good. So I think that, so that's for me, is the interesting point he makes, that they would like to buy from local manufacturers as well. But then if, for instance... 60% or 50% or 30% of the item is not even produced in Ghana, then it then begs the question whether that's even really local manufacturing. So I, I leave that to you to help us answer. Are you talking about the, the, the component of production that happens in Ghana? So, that, so the issue is, how do we grow? We can't grow if the majority of what we are even producing is almost imported and bagged here. Okay. And then they want to be able to buy from local manufacturers so that they don't have to also expend expensive forex. But we, it seems that relationship is not strong. Industrialization, it's a painful process. All the nations that have developed, they will not just get up and industrialize overnight. So you begin by adding value. Different levels of value addition up to that point that you can entirely produce everything locally. That's the point. If we need to import raw material, which we do in most instances, you want to have the importation of raw materials made cheaper for you in order to have cheaper inputs in the production process. So that's why we're saying that this policy, we want it to be extremely purposeful and intentional to actually focus on how we can 
you know, promote our industrialization agenda. Because if you are doing that, a sugar to somebody is a raw material, but a sugar can also be a finished product. So a sensible policy maker would just focus on making sure that the guy who is using it into his uh, beverage company as a raw material receive different type of support as opposed to the guy who is getting it to sell directly. So that I'm saying that. Acceptable. So I'm saying that. Very I'm saying that if yeah. the idea is for us to develop as a country, we we we, are, we cannot apply a wholesale rule which we are calling for. We are saying be deliberate, be purposeful, know what is a raw material, know what ought to be supported and what ought not to be supported. And that's what we're saying. And as you mentioned, it is true that we produce locally. What we need to do now is to continue to promote the distribution of our locally produced products. And we are inviting our At friends. A competitive price. We are inviting our friends to begin to, you know, focus on helping to distribute, you know, locally made product, as opposed to the focus on the importation. Yes, importation. Of course, if you have benchmark value being reduced, it's it's it becomes very Jifa, attractive. I'm sorry, okay. uh, Jifa, um, Joseph, you, you do not have shops. You do not have shops. You do not distribute your products. Aha, so we 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 sell all these goods, and then the shortfall or demand is what we bring. You have to understand that manufacturing is never complete unless it reaches the final consumer, and we sell the as a vehicle. So yeah, and we are said, trying so to destroy said, the distributive sector because uh, the manufacturing can never be vibrant. It can never succeed unless uh, it is tied out with a vibrant Okay, Mr. Obig, let me let him finish and then we'll take a yeah. break and then I'll let you okay. come back in. Yes. So, yeah, you take the whole day. I don't care. No, go, yeah. no, you will get, we'll come back from yeah, the break. Right. But you can finish your, your point. Yes. Well, so, so you run up. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what we are saying is that we are fully aware of all the challenges that we're facing, which we talked about. We don't need to be reminded of the challenges we're facing. In fact, we are pushing government on daily basis on all the issues of high tariff, of high electricity tariffs, of the cost of you know, borrowing, access to money, et cetera, et cetera. Even labor, quality of labor, and so on. And we're saying that, we given all these challenges, why are we now going to be introducing a, 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 a benchmark value reduction. So if government reverse a policy to the place it were, I thought that should be an, an acceptable news. How are you being affected? How is the final consumer being affected? What has happened is that the final consumer has been given options. So if you go to the pharmacy, there's paracetamol, MNG paracetamol manufactured in Ghana. Probably it's two CDs. But there's another type of pain, pain reliever, which is 20 CDs. They all do the same thing. The consumer has the opportunity to decide what they want. And that's exactly what this policy is saying. All right. Let's take some quick messages and then we take a break. Many of you have been sending messages on Twitter. Thanks very much. Uh, this one from Kojo Mensa. It says, to be sincere, the MPP government has disappointed and failed us in terms of product, in terms of taxation. This was not the promise they gave Ghanaians when they were in opposition. Where is the mantra moving Ghana's economy from taxation to production? Uh, this one from Nana, so I said, just one day the youth will arise and our governments will know their smoothness level. Yeah, uh, this. this one <laughs> says, it's from Papa J Jr. It says, controversy over the benchmark values policy. Government always needs money, but the citizens don't need money. Hmm. Uh, this one from, okay, so this one says, yeah. It's one. Government has a policy to make sure that we also start um, go on a, uh, an exporting spree. So we also get the foreign exchange and it also stabilizes our currency. Government has a policy where we want to make sure that people within also get jobs to do. Don't, someone shouldn't travel from Ghana and go to America or UK and go and work in a factory. Why can't we also do it here? So if doctor wants to build a factory, we'll support him fully for that. We'll support him in whatever is important. They can come and do the finishing here and everything. And we'll support such projects because where he can imp uh, employ about 250 people, 300 people, it reduces that uh, unemployment deficit that we have. 
And that is what we are looking at. We need to also become a player, a big player within the industry where we have a lot of products here that we export. And we are going to support for the finishing because we realize that one thing that is worrying us a lot is the finishing of our products. The proper branding. The proper and branding completion. and completion and everything. And we've put in a conscious effort to support in that field and make sure that we sell Ghana and we sell it well. And so whatever we have to do to get our locals to also set up and improve upon what they are doing, you realize that we've put in a lot of effort in the TVET, that is vocational and technical. And these are all ways of also creating that avenue of supporting the local man, um, playing field. And we'll do that in every way to make sure that at least Ghana gets on the radar in a grand style. But isn't it also the case that we need to scale because it seems that the support we are giving doesn't seem scaled up enough. And so you are looking for a certain national transformation, mm -hmm. but you're not getting it because the skill across board is limited. Let me give you an example of a product like um, Alata Seminar. First, when it came, it was just in that paper bag and everything. Now you realize that when you go to certain markets or supermarkets and things, you have the scented ones and all these that are going around. It means that there's some improvement. It takes time. It takes years that people will learn how to um, upgrade their products and also get to that end or that quality that we need. Now you can't even get the bar soap of Alate Semna and everything. And so it gives you an insight of what you are looking at. But it's not a one-day process, as uh, my brother said. It takes, it takes time. But can't, it takes, can't, we, it takes can't we just a reduce conscious, the extent it, of importation for certain products? That's what we've done. The 43 are certain products. Yeah. It is not everything. It's certain products. We have not done it for all. And that is why I, sometimes you have to take a draconian measure to locally improve upon your industry. It will hurt someone today, but in the next three, four, five years, when they see the boom in the industrial drive, they'll realize that at the end of the day, what government did some five years back was to grow and better the state of the people in its country. Our first and foremost um, work or promise that uh, we have to do is to make sure that the Ghanaian people or the Ghanaian populace are satisfied. And we are going to do anything possible to make sure that the Ghanaians get it first before we look at what we are bringing in. And with that, we are not going to get it wrong. All right. We owe that duty to the people of Ghana to make sure that we create the employment, we create, um, create the um, um, environment where production, manufacturing, and everything will go on well. And we would still sit up and listen to ideas, um, negotiate on the table, make sure that whatever we have to do to get the locals, the local industry, build capacity, improve upon things, to make sure that Ghana is first, we'll do it. All right. Let's uh, speak to the Honorable Ricketts Hagan. Uh, he's a former Deputy Minister for Finance and he's also an MP for Cape Coast and he's South. From, he's from my uh, constituency. Let's just quickly speak with him uh, and get his thoughts because... Um, last week, the NDC had a press conference. They are opposed to the removal of the benchmark values. For them, they feel that other things need to be done to reduce whatever uh, you know, expenditures are being made by the government. And so rather, we should keep the benchmark values. Good morning to you, uh, Honorable Ricketts Hagan. Uh, good morning, Diva. Great. So what for you... Is the alternative to, to keeping <laughs> the benchmark values because if we keep it, AGI this says it affects local production of certain products. What's the best way forward? Um, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the opportunity this morning um, to be on your show. Um, I want to also uh, say good morning to uh, my fellow panelists in your studio. And a happy new year to all uh, your viewers. Um, it's quite a, a, a interesting. There are actually three different school of thoughts by three different stakeholders on this issue. And government being one of the stakeholders, AGI being one, 
and then of course Guta. The problem is the, the, the school of thought shared by government is actually not the same school of thought shared by AGI, but the government has conveniently taken shelter with AGI on this matter. Why am I saying this? The, if you look at um, what Guta is saying, and, and there's a merit in, in, in what they are saying, that this has actually obviously helped reduce, you know, prices at port and invariably, you know, prices in terms of uh, um, for consumers and, and other things. When you look at the AGI standpoint, which is what they've been saying for years, is that, look, some kind of protectionism, which what this is, you know, help in terms of uh, um, um, local business and local production and all that. Now, the government motivation for this reversal is not that of AGI, but of its own. And that is basically government needs money. The projection for revenue for 2022 is around 100 billion. And they need to find this money by any means necessary to be able to pay for, you know, wages, to pay for uh, uh, debts and, and so many other things in terms of their own, you know, uh, numerous programs that uh, they want to do. Now, to come and say that all of a sudden, this, this before, before, and let's go back to 2019, before this policy, which is the benchmark value discount policy, that is the, the, the full name, because it is given a discount to the already existing benchmark value. Before this policy came in, this government came in 2017, started with industrialization, obviously industrializing Ghana and being able to, you know, produce locally and all that. At that time in 2019, this government policy of industrialization, which is still on, was there. But the government decided that it was going to bring, this, bring in this benchmark policy at the time. When they want to be able to help local manufacturers, brought in this policy. Then two, three, down, two three years down the road, they are reversing the same policy that they themselves created. So it tells you clearly that it is not uh, AGI that doesn't know what they are talking about, and it is not good time that doesn't know what their position is, but it's actually government. That doesn't clearly, the, the government hasn't got a clue what they are trying to do. Whether they are trying to industrialize the country or whether they are trying to help traders. So the policy on trade, you know, by government and the policy on industrialization is not actually clear when you go by this very, this, this, this very policy. But uh, Honorable Hagan... Honorable Rick, it's Hagan. Any of the things that they are talking about, they have conveniently associated themselves with AGI at this point to say that they are trying to help local manufacturers. But, but we but, all know the situation in the country. You know, uh, we, 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 we basically cannot, cannot cope. And we need more money. Okay, so let, let me come in. For a simple reason why let, they, are, they, are, they are doing this reversal. Okay, let me come in at this point because... Um, isn't it rather government torn between being, a, be, being between a rock and a hard place? Because you are trying to please everyone. You end up not pleasing anyone. The local manufacturers need incentive in order to grow. Guta may also need this support because we are coming out of an era of COVID. And it is true that freight charges have almost tripled from the usual, what, 3,000 you know, gone up to as high as in some instances, we are told, 12,000 US dollars for a container. And so this is about all governments, uh, for want of a better analogy, children needing help. Well, if I hear all you said is right, except that the government motivation in this is completely different from that of AGI or from Guta. Government simply needs money. And at this post-pandemic, you know, uh, 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 economy, government is trying to do whatever it can 
to be able to get money to 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 uh, basically finance or, or to fund all these numerous numerous programs that he wants to do. Okay, uh, and now for that reason, he needs to find money, whether it's the EDB or whatever he can find it. And this is one of the ways it just happens that this is something AGI has been preaching about in terms of, uh, as I said, some level of protectionism to be able to help local industries. We all do know that obviously things that come into the country as a form of importation doesn't help very much because it creates a lot of problems, uh, you know, in terms of um, our foreign exchange, being able to, you know, raise the level of foreign exchange we need and affect our city in terms of the city's depreciation. And so many other problems. It doesn't help the local industry because certain things that could, could be produced here are being brought into the country. And therefore, when you look at it in terms of competitive, competitiveness, the, 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 the local produce or the local product becomes more expensive than the one that comes outside. Because don't forget, foreigners are also cushioning their companies to be able to produce cheaply and to be able to bring those product here. What we have to do as a country is to be able to do the same for our local manufacturers in terms of protecting them not by 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 tariffs or by way of sending other products into the country, but in terms of reducing the exchange rate, making cost of business, you know, reasonable and all the things that they can do to help local industries. That is not government's motivation at this stage. Though they preach about it, but what they do is entirely different. If no. they really care about local manufacturing, why did they bring this policy in the first place in 2019? When they were promoting industrialization, when they were claiming that they want local businesses and local production, you know, to, they want to help them. And then three years down the, the line, they are changing their position that they want to do something else. All of a sudden, government wants to help AGI and, and, and it's not that is local manufacturing. The motivation, in fact, is not about what AGI is preaching. It's about government, pure and simple, needs money to fund this economy. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Ricketts Hagan. Many thanks, sir, for joining us on the key points. So, uh, Mr. Thompson, I know you want to quickly address that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll address uh, final it. comments from uh, Mr. Pelu and then. I'll give um, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Obi <coughs> the final word. Yes. I'll address it very quickly. Um, in the first place, which government doesn't need money? Every government <laughs> needs money to do projects. So when he goes that, oh, the basic and most uh, important thing is that we need money, truthfully, every government needs money. And every government needs money to do projects. Second, but, that's, but that's not the spin, Mr. No, Thompson. I, the whole, whole spin he's given is that government needs money, government needs money. Yes, Which so, government doesn't need so money? So he, what he's saying is, mm -hmm. don't take shelter with AGI. We're not taking shelter with anyone. We are taking shelter with the fact that we need to um, empower the Ghanaian. We are taking sh um, shelter with the fact that we need to give employment to Ghanaians. We are taking shelter to the fact that we need to create the industry for Ghanaians to also be able to stand on their feet and do something on their own. Now, coming to their double standard, you see, and this is why I say NDC has double standards. When we introduced this thing, there were the same people who complained about it. They were fighting her skelter. Why should we do this? Why are we introducing this benchmark? Uh, why are we um, dropping this um, um, rate and everything? Now we are changing and we are saying that, listen, we've given them the chance, the, uh, what do you call it, importers, the chance to also make money a bit. Now, let us help the local industry to grow. Have we done anything wrong? No. But they come back and now they are fighting us. Oh, it's because government needs money. It's because uh, I'm sure when they were in power, they didn't need money to grow. But the plain and truthful thing is that it takes time for you to develop your industry. When you've worked with an, with an industry, you realize that, and my brother uh, Tonam will tell you that, it takes about five, four, five years for your business to really thrive well, if you want to let it grow and grow well. So government is putting in the measures that will help them start. Government will put in the measures that will help them, support them, and make sure that at the end of the day, they are bringing out good and uh, marketable products. And government will make sure that within the five years, they will become a solid force. Don't forget that any goods sent to another country are excess goods from the country of origin. They are goods that they have produced and they've produced over the year. If someone has taken 15 years to grow and produce 
uh, items in this country and it's giving you the excess. That doesn't mean that you should also sit down and say that I'm always going to get it from them, but I'm not also going to grow and also um, have access to um, export to other places. And that is why I'm glad when my brother um, Saddam said that, listen, even Nigeria is coming to Ghana to pick our paddy rice and turn it into finished products. Now, very soon you will hear that Ghana is doing all these scented rices and everything, and you will see that this importation of rice into this country is going to be a thing of the past. We are going to make every conscious effort to support and grow Ghana. And Ghana is the most important, and it's Ghana first, and nothing more, nothing less. All right. Um, Mr. Apelu, your thoughts before, well, and th those are your final comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, industrialization is a difficult part, but also necessary part. All countries that have developed, take South Korea and the Chairman Park. It took them 10 years to industrialize, but it was at extremely high cost because they have to take very high draconian measures to make it happen. Those days, when they started, you not drive a Korean car, but today, Everybody wants to drive Korean car. The same for, for Malaysia. The same for U.S. You know, uh, some few years ago, when Huawei was trying to uh, have dominance in the U.S., President Trump put a stop to it. But now, Huawei, they've gone back, and they are creating their own OS. And so that's why they, they don't even use the Google uh, you know, Play Store any longer. So we're saying that every country is doing everything they can to make sure that they have a, a, a local and industrialization flair to everything they are doing. We, as a nation, have to start. The question is when. It has to be now. But because maybe, maybe the point Dr. Albing also made that AGI also needs to show us some of its success stories. Because I know some of your success stories have been Samba Foods, for instance. I know that there have been some fruit producers in the in the AGI who've also gained such success people need to see that local manufacturers are also successful as an incentive to also join they have the story. probably leave importation and come and join my, my dear sister in AGI we've got over 24 sectors there are success stories in all these sectors take the pharmaceuticals you know you you know Kina Pharma you know all of them NS Chem is dampon. These are, go to Nigeria. All of them come and buy this product. Because not only of the quality, the reputation, the efficacy, etc. We're doing it. What we need now is attitude in our change. We have to begin to get more national. We have to be able to produce what we consume and consume what we produce. And the only way we do is that is not to continue to look forward to the importer. It's easy to make importation money. It's sweet. It's a lot of money. You know, that's why my friend is very emotional, because he knows that it, it's a big deal. But we are saying that we understand the, the many making of money component. But our focus is that let's begin to take the extremely painful part. It is painful, but we have to. And we are doing it, and we need the support of everybody. I, I mentioned about the Nigeria, uh, you know, banning the importation of rice. You know what I mean? If it was Ghana, I'm sure that we all go on demonstration. But they say, hey, this is how we are going. And then when they also realize that people were importing and smuggling through Benin, they blocked the Benin border just to make sure that they, they, they industrialize. And now they are picking up. You may not like the rice you eat when you go to Lagos, but I can assure you that the, the policy had meant that they would improve. Over time, they will get it. And I'm saying we have to do the same, same, same for ourselves. So for AGI, we're extremely consistent. We believe in local industrialization. And we also know that the only way our foreign, uh, our currency can improve is where we consume what we produce here and minimize the importation so that we don't have all these foreign exchange issues. Think about it. About 70% or so of everything we use in Ghana is imported. That is unacceptable. How do you want to discuss development with that attitude? So it is a high time all of us you know, come on board to make this happen. So when is, the, when is the next meeting with government for final view, we oh, hope? Our it's understanding good. is that government has reversed the policy. We're happy about it. All of us who have spoken about the policy are excited now. Okay. The, the only challenge I see is the, 
the calibration of, of being able to change this other port. And these are purely administrative. And I think that the GRA needs time to be able to do this. But otherwise, in terms of policy, it's been reversed. And we're happy about it. All right. And we're inviting uh, Joseph to be excited as well. Yeah. Dr. Albin, your final words. Yeah. Uh, industrialization is definitely the way forward. But the unfortunate thing is that if you do not know how to situate it, then you will become a failure. And that's all that we are facing. Um, what we say industrialization does not mean that we have to produce everything. It's never possible. We can uh, be an uh, industrialized country based on certain things that we have comparative advantage. The tiles that I'm talking about, the raw material, is mountains of clay where it is found everywhere in Ghana. Wasa, uh, Yashanti region, Kwewu, these are mountains. And so we have this huge resource. And then once we have seen that we are succeeding there, then we make conscious effort to establish more of this. Government make deliberate effort to partner with um, the private sector to set up so many machines so that Ghana will be known as the producer of this. And not only the tiles, about may, maybe about 10 items, then we will be dependent by the world on this. And that is also industrialization. So if you do not contest it well, then you will face this thing. You know, the people who are succeeding in manufacturing here, they are not part of these people. They don't even have time. They are producing because they are servicing the demands of the locals. Those who are not doing well and those who are lobbying AGI to do this, it's as simple as that. And government should take its time to dissect the issues. That's why we've called on government to, as a matter of urgency, um, um, make stakeholders engagement with this. But they, so, they've suspended the implementation till the 17th of January. So it still means no, that you read, are... No, read, read the, 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 I the statement. The statement. If you read the statement, we are saying that government should suspend the program so that we sit down and dialogue and um, build consensus where we will be compensated, where ADI will be compensated, where government itself will also have something. But if you read at this, it looks like an internal memo mm -hmm. that has come. So it's not the response <clears throat> from the government, because government, this is the implementers who are doing their own thing. We want an answer from the government, the, the policy um, uh, makers. You understand? Uh, for which it has not come. Let me tell you, um, the biggest employer of this nation, we don't have to um, there's um, a, a pedal on truth. It's agriculture, followed by trading, followed by transportation. So you see, Ghana needs all of these segment, uh, um, segments of um, pro, um, production. Or some. So it shouldn't be said that they are just emphasizing on one and kill the others. That's a, a problem. It shouldn't be said that these people started on truth that they generate the biggest employment, which is not true. Oh, I don't think they've said That's that. what they're saying. No, they they can complement. They will complement employment. I think everyone based. knows that agriculture is the biggest. But I'm glad trading, you mentioned trading. Well, yeah, trading and transport. And trading, trading and transport. Goods. That's what we're asking for. But trading and we, 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 do you sell your products? We sell and bring the shop for you. should get that. And that's why you're not being a, a truthful to your own self. It means that you do not even know um, the, the arm of production that you have, the distributive sector, and you want to kill it. It's very bad. Government should dissect these issues and not to follow just one sector to punish the others. Uh, yeah, please do that. And we, have, we need this engagement. And this is what we've called on government. We're pleading. Government is a listening government, and we, we've tested it. Government have given all these assets. I've told you when AGI went to lobby the uh, economic management team, like uh, found it prudent. They found it prudent to call the trading sector to also say something. I'm that's glad, what. I'm glad you are saying. Yes, 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 yes. That's what we are talking you. about. Yeah. So um, we want to sit down. This is not too much to ask. Yeah. When a, a major a policy is being re uh, reversed, you just had that. Uh, that uh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Your, 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 your daughter. Yeah. Man. So Relax. please, I, I, I want us um, to the government. We are not acting so much. We say that sit down with this, and we've even promised the trade uh, trade minister that when we sit with government, and I told the finance minister, the things that we are going to even inform the um, the uh, the uh, committee, mm -hmm. 
it's going to even help Ghana to even double our efforts to uh, and then we also support the local area with the thoughts that we have. So we are not negative. It's not that, so if you paint us like that, because we've done our best, we sell those input that they do, the shortfall or demand, we break. And what have I, what we, we done okay. uh, to be, and so um, what we are also saying is that we have been here before. Rollins time in year 2000 brought what we call a uh, special task so that essential commodities where uh, the prices of essential commodities went up. At that time, it was an issue. We, we, we did what we, we can. They didn't understand because they wanted to boost local industrialization like this. And then we gave it about um, only um, with, uh, less than one year and back, government backtracked. You know what happened? The locals will give money to these AGI people, the manufacturers. We give them money to produce one container. And it will take six months, more than six months. You haven't gotten goods were getting shot. You know what they were doing? They, they, when the opportunity came for them, because the, the demand is so huge, they brought their um, nephews, their girlfriends to be oh. the distributors. Yes, it's true. They, they, became, they brought distributors. Well, I well, have let's access just to my say they brought distributors. That's yeah, for nephews they, and they, girlfriends. Yeah, they, they brought their, their family members to become, excuse me, excuse me, uh, it's acceptable. They brought these people to so be distributors and then they will add that. Please, let me finish. It's true. So, so we don't no. know, no, we don't know about that. You may that. not know, because it's a we very good information. No, see, if, if, if you say that they brought <laughs> distributors <laughs> to do something, let's just say They brought their cronies to distribute. I'm telling you, it's true. And that you have, you okay, virtually so have access. So and, and, and you so know, have you, heard, have you heard what is called cheat, cheat system? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where you'll be given a cheat before you get goods. We won't go to that era. Okay, so, so, so for, you, to, for you, this policy um, for you is not been reversed. That's your position. The stakeholder engagement must happen. Exactly. And then when you guys reach an agreement, then we can move forward. We, we, you know why? Because, you know, even in this present dis dispensation, where we think that the duty is even affordable, you know that there's an industry that is being created at the port. Oceaning. Oceaning is now an industry. People cannot even pay under this dispensation. Importers cannot pay, some of them. And that this ocean, these goods... But the day, it's an industry. The sharks, the highness, the vultures are waiting so that even if you delay one day, they will auction your goods. Now, when this policy comes, a away. lot more of the important committees. That's why I'm talking like what I'm doing. Okay, so I think I have to give the final point to Mr. Thompson. Uh, to I the think. government. Yes, yeah, so well, you are well, done. Thank give you. Me the, so, Mr. The Thompson, you are done. The... Now, you are being, now <laughs> there's a perception of creating a whole new industry. So, quickly, in two minutes, because we have to wrap up. When, when you buy products from outside, you are creating employment for that country. When you buy goods from outside, you are sending money here to that country and it affects your currency, it affects your payments, it affects everything you are doing as a country. Our policy is to grow Ghana. Our policy is to empower our people. Our policy is to support our, our local industries. Grow people, establish people. Because you are looking at the next five, 10 years, and you see, the perception or the, the mantra that Nana started with is industrialization and also to make sure that we grow Ghana. Okay, you've said that, but I think you need to address this issue about the potential risks that may happen at the port exactly. where Oceaning people have spent money to bring in goods and they may end up being auctioned. We don't know whether like, cheaper or higher not, or they will who. not. They will not auction anyone. So I think we are sitting. We are sitting. We are still sitting with them. We are still talking Thank with you. them, Thank and you. we will still make sure that we, we meet each other halfway okay. because That's it's necessary. And so that even it. if it yeah. means he giving that, listen, extension time to government, pay whatever yes, needs government to be is paid, a listening government. because that's quite a serious and as I sit now, as I said now, I know that the Ministry of Finance, are, they are in a deliberation. They are looking at how ways and means of helping because despite everything, we need to help our people. And once there are people important, we can't look at them and say that to hell with you. We are not that government. We are a government that we listen, that we support, that we help. 
and we'll go to every extent to make sure that Guta is happy with whatever mm -hmm. they are doing. All right. Yeah. Thank you very, thank much, you very much, gentlemen. Yeah. It's been a really <laughs> hot <laughs> discussion. I want to say thanks at the far end to Mr. Sonam uh, Akpelu, who is the Greater Accra AGI chairman. He's also the CEO of Suku Technologies. He's an entrepreneur. Bilodi. Many thanks to <laughs> Alfred Thompson, who is a former yeah, deputy MD for NIB. <laughs> And many thanks to Dr. Joseph of being the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. Very passionate. He's the kind of president you should have for your association. <laughs> you I never you. lose at all. <laughs> and many thanks come back. So it's a week into the new year, and as you've already seen, uh, the issues which